All right, it's a good day. We've got the Giro, and I uh, just want to quickly talk about the Brighton computers. Actually, I'll talk about this later on. That's the Brighton. This is the, the lightest GPS unit I can think of out there. It's 36 hour battery life. It's got 32 hour battery. So there's a Brighton 330, probably my favorite out there. The 450s has got maps. That's the main difference, is there. Bit bigger screen. The Giro. The Giro. Did you see that? It was at stage nine with Victor Kampouts. It's also into the high carb vegan thing. Set the hour record recently. Set the hour record recently. The best time trialist around. One of the best time trialists around. I can't understand. In that fucking, the, the bike switch, man. The bike change. You know, apparently had a mechanical, dropped his chain, needed the bike swap. Why is the mechanic pushing him in the ass while he's in road shoes? Trying to get on his bike. The mechanics push him in the ass. Why didn't they practice this? This is the world tour. This is the Giro d'Italia. This isn't E-grade at a local crit or in a CX race where your mate's on the fucking piss. Oh, yeah, go and push her through the pits, mate. And you have, they're having a prank. They're having a joke. Well, push her before you get on the bike. What, how, how does that even happen? How does that even happen, man? <laughs> So people out there are like, why aren't all the professional cyclists vegan and doing what you say, Harley? It's like, well, they can't even get a bike change in the world tour, correct, every time. You know, so there's, and that's not to throw shade or whatever, that's just human error, I forget it. But it's just to show you that there's massive room for improvement in all professional sports. We just assume, oh, they're the professionals, they know everything. We saw that bike change that, you know, there's still massive room for improvement, and that's exciting. That is awesome. You know, it means we're nowhere clear near human potential, natural or dope or otherwise. There's massive room. Even Simon Yates in the TT, power dropping off. What is that? That's not form. That's muscle glycogen. All right. Running out of muscle glycogen. Number one factor in a TT. It was cool conditions. It wasn't too hot, was it? A bit of rain. All right, he wasn't getting dehydrated. Maybe he was, maybe. Okay, but it's more or less likely if your power's dropped off in the TT and it's not crazy hot, it's carbohydrate intake, especially when you're that lean and stuff like that. So yeah, you know, less, it could be water. Okay, it could be water, it could be hydration, it could be blood volume dropping off because you get dehydrated, your plasma drops right down. All right, potentially. But I'd say it was not enough sugar. So all Yates had to have was some sugar in his water bottle you know? But, the, like, maybe he did. Maybe he didn't have enough. Maybe he didn't have enough carbs the day before. Maybe he got caught up in media and dra drama or whatever. Maybe he'd feel a bit sick in his gut. Either way, the muscle glycogen wasn't there. All the training there's the ability there's the team support. Everything's still there, right? But the muscle glycogen wasn't. So there you go. You know, simple thing, simple as sugar. People are like, oh, no, it's not in good form. Roglic was better. Uh, yes, Roglic was smashing it, but he was more carved up. Definitely. If we look at the mechanics of shit, how things work, don't just say, oh, someone's got better form. What does that mean? What does that mean, better form? Okay, better blood volume. Better ability to have more muscle glycogen in the muscles at all times, which can be nutrition, which is, which is nutrition, physiology, 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 genetics, etc., and diet on the day. Getting enough carbohydrates, not eating too much fat. So we know that Yates didn't eat too much fat his legs weren't blocked because his power was good and then it dropped off. You know? I didn't see the power files. I'm making an assumption here. But it looked like his power went, zzz, zzz, dropped off. He lost time in the later stages. He's a light guy. He should be dominating at the end of a TT, being so light on the climbs, etc. So if you're losing time and you're a climber and you're a lightweight guy, then you simply didn't have enough carbohydrate. Because these guys know how to fucking pace. They're not noobs going out there with you know, 500 watts and blowing up. They're riding to watts, they're riding to power. And the inability to hold the power means the glycogen simply wasn't there. These guys come into race in good form. They've got good hemoglobin values. Everything's right, all right? Everything's right. It's good preparation. There's good attitude training. But if your power's dropping off the TT, not enough sugar. Simple as that. So that's 50 cents of sugar. 50 cents. Bike's worth 15 grand. 50 cents of sugar. Could save the day, save a career. It's so simple, isn't it? It's so simple, people are shocked at the answer. Even people who, who would watch that bike change with Victor and Team Lotto, if they didn't understand 
what's going on there. Like, oh, yeah, he's, oh, he's doing a bike change. Oh, cool. You know what I mean? They don't go, oh, my God, like, why is he getting pushed? He's not even on the bike. Why isn't the bike in the 39.28 ready to spin off? Why is the bike in the 50 fucking three? The bike should be in the easiest gear at all times, so you can just stop. You can hit 120 cadence straight away with that big surge of power, low fatigue metabolites because your torque's low because you're spinning to win Lance Armstrong, Dr. Ferrari style in the 53 up a 7% grade, you know? And a spectator came to the rescue gave him a bit of a push. That's, he lost the stage because of that, man. He <laughs> lost the stage. Bogdanovich got more of another threesome with the podium girls that night, you know? Campus in his hotel room thinking what could have been. For the two Italianas. You know, it's crazy, man. So it's, uh, you know, again, not to throw shade, not to make fun. Not to be like, oh, oh stop. No, 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 no. This is just purely, you know, comments and criticisms, just sharing knowledge and information and a viewpoint that is definitely beneficial to anyone who takes it on board. What else are we seeing in the, in the Jura? We're seeing now, in the Bali, my money's in the Bali. My money's in the Bali. Uh, definitely on, on the Bali. He's just got that seasoned experience. He's still got the hunger. His physiology looks good. His power looks good. Roglic's face looked a little bit stressed yesterday. You know, at the start, it looked like he was a bit, you know, on the ropes, in my opinion. His performance is outstanding. But Nabali looked a little bit more like, yeah, I've been here. I've got this. Roglic is more, this is new territory for him. It's new territory. So new territory becomes new emotional stresses, becomes expended calories that you need for the race, you know, emotions, etc. Nabali may be... You know, he's sitting in his hotel room with a couple of fangirls taking it all in. Bogdan should be like, you know, media, boom, boom, everyone's a piece of him. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, that can be very stimulating, but also can be very, very draining. You know, it's in the barley. For me, the money's in the barley. Making it rain on that marina. Uh, what else can we say about the, the Giro? But that's uh, probably about it. Again, disc brake bikes. You know, we saw disc brake bikes. We saw Richie Port in the Tour of California, stage six, was it? Getting dropped, getting dropped on Mount Baldy. Now, Richie Port, he's the most talented rider in the peloton at the moment in the Tour of California. That's just finished. You know, Richie Port has the most prestige, correct for wrong. You got Uran in there as well. But Richie Port, you know, he's, he's definitely got some results there over, over the years. He's definitely qualified to be in that peloton. And I think he got 15th on the stage. Was that, you know, he did get a mechanical, I think his chain slipped off or whatever it was. <laughs> Shram. <laughs> That, that, that can happen to anyone. That can happen to anyone. Especially if you're riding Shram. Seriously, Shram's my favourite group set. You know, Shram Mechanical Red's my favourite group set. But yeah, disc brakes, man. You know? Uh, they got Vichy Poor, one of the best climbers in the world. Not as fast as Phil Gaimont. But riding disc brake bikes. You know? Like, it's, 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 it's bullshit. If, if Richie was on an Amanda SLR rim, that's extra speed. That's extra free speed. Go and ride a 6.8 kilo Trek Amanda SLR and a 6.8 kilo Trek Amanda SLR disc, or a Tarmac, or a Avenger, or a freaking TCR, or a Fat, whatever you want to ride. Same weight, disc or rim, up a hill, rim brake, it just feels so much more frisky, more lively, more responsive. It's just a better performing bike. And so when you're on the absolute limit, when you've got lactate in your freaking earlobes, you're going so hard, having that little bit extra frisk on the bike gives that a you know, reduce perceived effort and can make you go a bit quicker. And also, you won't have that rubbing, ding, 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 rotors. You know, maybe you just had a crash, you dropped your bike, ding, ding, ding. You don't know GC. Richie Port doesn't need that. Richie Port doesn't need better brakes, man. The dude knows how to go downhill, right? Dude knows how to put on the line. That's why people say, oh, he has a lot of crashes. Like, everyone has crashes. Like, if you ain't crashing in the pro peloton, then you ain't taking risks. You ain't really a pro rider. If you don't have broken collarbones and scars and all fucked up elbows and hands and shit, then you ain't a pro rider, really, are you? you know, you're yet to be a pro rider. So that's just part of the job, man. If you ain't crashing, that's, that's just bad luck as well, man. Which he's had a lot of bad luck in, um, in some of his races. So we wish him well in the Tour de France this year. And But I, I, I don't think he's going to be competitive on that disc brake bike. I just, how? You know, how? Like, you know, how? how, how why would Trek do that? I don't understand. Trek should give... They should copy Cannondale. Cannondale gives the riders the choice. Do you guys want rim? Or you want, you know, you want a good rim job? Or you want a disc job? And all the guys, they're going, give us the rim. Give us that rim job in California for sure. And you see it. 
Super Six Evo, a lightweight fucking bike. Ride one of those, man. I've got a few of those, one of those. Ridden a fair few of them, though. And they're frost, they're frisky, they're great. Lightweight carbon, like a Deng Fru FM 066. So they're just a great bike, lightweight stuff. Same with the Trekamonda, fantastic bike. But you throw disc brakes on it, all of a sudden it's like, oh, it's sluggish. Who wants to ride a sluggish bike up a hill? Not me. So it's, it's, uh, it's crazy stuff. But anyway, that's the little uh, reports for the week. Um, you know, I, I think Trek, yeah, just to re recap that, I think Trek should give Richie the choice. They should give the riders the choice. You guys want rim or disc? And Richie will fucking put his hand up. Rim. Give me the rim, mate, motherfuckers. Let, let, give, why are we holding back riders' potential because of sponsorship? Oh, we understand that. Why? Because the money. You know, but at least give them the options, Trek, and Specialized as well. The Specialized doesn't have any GC riders this year, do they? Any GC riders from Specialized? No, I don't think there is, is it? So it's, uh, you know, it's just, yeah. Those, for those people out who doubt me, go and ride a rim or disc brake bike, same weight. It's night and day. It is night and day. It's night and day difference. And you know, even if you're a noob, you can feel it. Natasha, relatively new to cycling, put her on a disc brake bike, rim brake bike, you didn't even say what you say much, and all of a sudden she's on the rim brake bike, she's more frisky, she's going for Strava KOMs and PRs and just wanting to ride more. Huge, huge benefit there on rim brake. Gravel bikes, disc brake, road bikes for a rim. Anyway, that's the deal there. What else are we going to see? Nibali for the Giro, Chris Froome for the Tour de France, rim brake riders. Nibali has the choice, rim or disc, and he chooses rim. There's not a professional cyclist out there in the road scene who needs disc brakes. You know? We even saw Tour of California, the guy on the tarmac, his brakes were failing. Did you see how poor that descent was? That was definitely brake failure there. All out of the shop. You know? There's no way a pro cyclist could go downhill that slow, that, that sketchy. That was clearly the brakes was going something over there and just not knowing what was going on. Even I could, even me, the poor descender could go downhill better than that. Yeah. Something was going on there. That was just, uh, you, don't become a, you can't become a pro cyclist with that poor skill. That was just lack of brakes. Lack of brakes. And we got have lack, lack of brakes, you got lack of control. Just like two, two of Utah stage four crash into the back of that Porsche Panamera. Like a lucky no one was hurt there. Hurt too bad. Anyway, that's the wrap up. That's the wrap up.